In this video, we'll demonstrate how to create an aggregate production plan using a chase strategy by varying the workforce. This question corresponds to problem 13.3 in your text. Here, the president of Hill Enterprises projects the firm's aggregate demand requirements over the next eight months from January to August as follows and shown in the table. Her operations manager is considering a new plan which begins in January with 200 units on hand. Stock out cost of lost sales is $100 per unit. Inventory holding cost is $20 per unit per month. And we're supposed to ignore any idle time costs. The plan we're looking to develop will be called Plan A and will vary the workforce to execute a chase strategy by producing the quantity demanded in the month prior. That basically means next month's production will be equivalent to this month's sales. The December demand and rate of production were both 1,600 units per month. The cost of hiring additional workers is $5,000 per 100 units, and the cost of laying off workers is $7,500 per 100 units. And our objective is to evaluate the plan. So before we get into it, let's make sure that we list all the costs that we have. So again, we have inventory holding costs equal to $20 per unit per month. We have stockout costs equal to $100 per unit. The cost to hire additional workers when we increase capacity is $5,000 per 100 units. And the cost to lay off workers when we don't need them anymore is $7,500 per 100 units. In essence, each worker is capable of producing 100 units. The best way to tackle these kinds of problems is to develop a table. The first column in the table will be the production period, so in this case January through August. The second column will be the demand, ranging from 1,400 units in January through to 1,400 units in August. The third column will be the production, and remember, current month's production is based on previous month's demand. So for example, production in January is going to be 1,600 units because previous month's demand was 1,600 units. The next column, the purple column, will show us how many units we have left in inventory after production. And sales, of course. The fifth column will show us how many units we might stock out by if demand exceeds production. In the last two columns, we'll determine how many additional staff we're going to hire or lay off. So let's start with January. So January's demand is 1,400 units and the production is 1,600 units, again, based on previous month's demand, well, that will give us ending inventory of 400 units. Now, be careful here. Ending inventory is calculated as the 200 units in beginning inventory, as identified in the problem, plus the 1,600 units produced, minus the 1,400 demand. That's 400 units. If we have ending inventory, we won't stock out because we have enough to satisfy demand. Next, we have to look to determine, is there any hiring or laying off going on? And that's going to depend on what next month's production is going to be. Well, February's production is going to be based on January's demand. January's demand is 1,400 units. Therefore, February's production is going to be 1,400 units. If in the current month, January, we produce 1,600 units, and in February, we expect to produce only 1,400 units, that's a reduction in the capacity. So what we're going to do is lay off staff at the end of January rather than in the month of February. So that means that's the equivalent to 200 units or two employees laid off at the end of the month of January, and that's when the cost is incurred. Now let's look at the month of February. February's demand is going to be 1,600 units, and February's production is going to be 1,400 units, which is equivalent to January's demand. Ending inventory is calculated as the 400 units in beginning inventory, which was left over at the end of January, plus 1,400 units produced, minus 1,600 units sold, that's 200 units in ending inventory. Again, because there is ending inventory, there's no stock out. And then we look to see what's going to happen next month. March's production is going to increase to 1,600 units because that's what February's demand is. That means we're going to have to hire two workers to produce the equivalent to 200 units. Now we're going to incur that cost in February rather than in March because we need those employees ready and able to produce, which means they may have to undergo onboarding and training. And we don't want to wait until the month of March to do that because then they won't be available to produce. Moving on to the month of March now, we have demand of 1,800, production of 1,600, and ending inventory is actually zero because if we take the 200 units ending inventory from February, add 1,600 units of production, and subtract 1,800 units of sales, that is zero units in inventory. And also zero stock out because we have exactly enough to cover the demand. 
If we look to see what the production requirements will be for the month of April, we see that April's production is going to ramp up to 1,800 units from 1,600 units in March. That means we're going to have to hire two additional employees to produce the additional 200 units. Again, we incur that cost in March to make sure that the workers are ready to produce in the month of April. Moving into April now, production is 1,800 units and demand is also 1,800 units. And since there were no units in beginning inventory, that means ending inventory is also zero. Since production is equal to demand and there is no beginning inventory, the stock out costs are also zero. And then if we look to see what production is going to be in the month of May, April's demand is 1,800 units and therefore May's production will be 1,800 units as well. Now, since the company has already ramped up production to 1,800 units, there will be no additional hiring or layoffs required. In the month of May, production is 1,800 units, but demand is 2,200 units. Well, there is no beginning inventory, therefore the company will actually stock out by 400 units. That's the difference between 2,200 demanded and only 1,800 units available. June's production is going to be the equivalent to May's demand, so that's going to be 2,200 units. And since current production in May is 1,800 units, that will require the hiring of 400 units of additional workforce, or four employees. If we move to the month of June, production will be 2,200 units and demand 2,200 units. Since there's no beginning inventory and production is equivalent to demand, there is also no ending inventory and there will be no stockouts because exactly enough is available. July's production will be the equivalent to June's demand, so 2,200 units, but because the company has already ramped up to produce 2,200 units in June, no additional workers need to be hired or laid off. Looking into the month of July now, 2,200 units produced, but only 1,800 demanded will result in ending inventory of 400 units, no stock out costs, and then we look to see what will happen for August production. 1,800 units were demanded in July, so that will be August production. The company is currently producing 2,200 units, so production capacity will have to decrease by 400 units, requiring some layoffs. And then finally, in the month of August, 1,800 units are produced, but demand is only 400 units. That will result in 800 units in inventory, 400 units left over from July, plus 1,800 produced in August, minus 1,400 sold is 800 units, no stockouts. And for the month of September, production will decrease from the current 1,800 units to 1,400 units, which is what August's demand is. As a result, that's another 400 units or four layoffs. So now that we've done all the heavy lifting to determine how many units will be in any inventory, stockouts, how many additional workers need to be hired or laid off, we can now determine what the total cost for each will be. And all we do is sum up the total number of units in each column and then multiply by their respective cost. So the total number of units held in ending inventory over the eight month period is 1,800 units. The holding cost is $20 per unit per month for a total of $36,000. Stock out costs, the company only stocked out by 400 units in the month of May, and we multiply that by the stock out cost of $100 is a total of $40,000 in stock out costs. Over the eight month period, the company had to hire the equivalent to 800 units of production or eight workers at a cost of $5,000 per 100 units as stated in the problem or $5,000 per worker. That's a total of $40,000 in hiring costs. And then finally, a total of 1,000 units or 10 workers were laid off during the eight month period at a cost of $7,500 per 100 units is a total of $75,000. Therefore, the total cost for this plan A is $191,000. And that is an aggregate plan for a chase strategy by varying workforce.